Hi everyone! I chose poetry as my genre and I have two selections and they are going to be most appropriate for sixth grade and the strategy I'm going to try to incorporate is making text-to-text -text connections. Okay guys, today we are going to analyze two poems and we're going to try to work on making some text-to-text -text connections. So I'm just going to do a read aloud, think aloud, and I'm going to tell you about some things that I think about while I'm reading both poems, okay? So our first poem is called Growing Pains, and it is by Jean Little. Mother got mad at me tonight and bawled me out. She said I was lazy and self-centered. She said my room was a pigsty. So when I read these first few lines, I think about back when I was kind of a teenager and I would have some fights with my mom. I don't know if any of you guys fight with your parents, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. She went on and on until I began to cry. I hate crying in front of people. It was horrible. Okay, so that was the first stanza of the poem. And from that, um, I can tell that the narrator is a young person. We don't really know if it's a boy or a girl. And it kind of talks about the relationship with his or her mom. And it seems like they have kind of a rocky relationship because the mom has been doing a lot of nagging, and right now they're in a fight. Okay, so here's the second stanza. I got away, though, and went to bed, and it was over. I knew things would be okay in the morning. Stiff with being sorry, too polite, but okay. I was glad to be by myself. Okay, so I kind of found those two lines kind of interesting, so let me read that again. Stiff with being sorry, too polite, but okay. When I think about that, I think that the reader or the speaker is very upset about how he behaved during the fight and now he's kind of feeling the repercussions of that. So he's stiff because he's so upset about it, but he also feels like he was too polite. So that kind of speaks to his relationship with his mom as well. He was too polite with her even though he was feeling really upset. Then she came to my room and apologized. She explained too. Things had gone wrong all day at the store. She hadn't had a letter from my sister and she was worried. Dad had also done something to hurt her. She even told me about that. Wow, okay, so I think a lot of us can relate to kind of taking it out on someone when we've had a bad day or things are going wrong, but it seems like this mom has something really kind of heavy going on, like when it says Dad had done something to hurt her. The speaker doesn't really go into detail about what the dad did, so that makes me kind of think that it was something he didn't want to share because he felt it was really bad. Um, okay, continuing on. Then she cried. I kept saying, it's all right, don't worry, and wishing she'd stop. I'm just a kid. I can forgive her getting mad at me, that's easy. But her sadness, I don't know what to do with her sadness. I yell at her often, you don't understand me, but I don't want to have to understand her. That's expecting too much. Hmm. Okay. So that's kind of a deep last stanza, really. It seems like at the end of this poem, the kid telling the story is really confused. And even though he or she really wants to forgive the mother, um, he doesn't want to try to understand her because he thinks that that would cause him too much pain. So... That kind of reminds me of how difficult it is to try to make someone feel better when they're really sad or when sometimes they're so sad you can't even reach them, especially when it's one of your parents or like someone higher up than you, you feel. You feel like it's harder to um, get on their level and try to take care of them. Okay, so that was that first poem. Once again, that was Growing Pains by Jean Little. And now we are going to look at another poem. Um... And this poem is very different than the first, but it has some similar themes. And we're going to try to look for some text-to-text -text connections so we can better understand both of the poems. Okay, so when we're reading this, try to think about who the narrator is, how they're feeling, and what the main idea of the poem is. Okay? This is called Woman Work by Maya Angelou. I've got the children to tend, the clothes to mend, the floor to mop, the food to shop. Then the chicken to fry, the baby to dry. I got company to feed, the garden to weed. I've got shirts to press, the tots to dress, the can to be cut. I gotta clean up this hut. 
then see about the sick and the cotton to pick. Okay, so, so far, we can tell that this is a uh, mother or father. I guess it doesn't say specifically that it's a woman, but um, it says I've got the children to tend, so we know that it's a parent. And it seems to me like it would be a woman because um, in the older days when this was written, a lot of these tasks would usually automatically be assigned to the women in the family and uh, not usually the men. And if we look at it, it's very repetitive and it kind of drones on, like it says floor to mop, the food to shop, the chicken to fry, the baby to dry. So it seems to me like it's kind of a never-ending list of all these tasks, so it's very exhausting for whoever is talking. Shine on me, sunshine, rain on me, rain, fall softly, dewdrops, and cool my brow again. So this part of the poem sounds to me like it's kind of a prayer or a wish for some kind of relief, which goes along with the fact that the speaker is very exhausted and tired. Storm, blow me from here with your fiercest wind. Let me float across the sky till I can rest again. Again, she's kind of continuing on with this um, prayer or wish. And she even says, blow me from here. So she's clearly so overwhelmed and upset that she just wants to get out and kind of escape. Fall gently, snowflakes. Cover me with white, cold icy kisses, and let me rest tonight. Sun, rain, curving sky. Mountain, oceans, leaf, and stone. Star, shine, moon, glow, you're all that I can call my own. Okay, so it sounds like in this stanza she's saying she doesn't really feel like she owns anything in this world except the sun and the rain and parts of nature. So we can kind of try to connect to that and think, how might we feel if we didn't own a single thing and all we had to think about was this long list of things we had to do, like shirts to press, tots to dress, you know. It seems to me like this mother would be very upset and frustrated, and who knows how she might act to her family or friends, you know. She might show that frustration to them. Okay, so let's try to think about the two poems together. Um, in Growing Pains, we learned a lot about the perspective of the child, who had a mother who was very frustrated and angry, and the child was feeling very confused and didn't know how to help the mother, and was also feeling kind of hurt and sad. And then when we look at woman work, we hear about the perspective of the mother, and how she's got all these, you know, never-ending tasks, and she's feeling very tired. And, of course, um, these poems aren't actually written by the same author or connected in any way, but I just think there's a big connection in the theme, because um, the woman in woman work is obviously um, overwhelmed with her life. And I think that that really connects with the previous poem. So um, when you look at these two poems, I would love to know what kind of text-to-text -text connections you make. So uh, keep reading. Okay, so that was my uh, little read aloud, think aloud on my two pieces of poetry. I think it went pretty well. Um, I kind of took a risk in selecting poetry because I think it's kind of a challenge to find um, poetry appropriate for these grade levels, at least for me, because I've never really worked in that. I've usually worked in picture books. But I really liked both poems, and I just happened to find both of them, and I thought when I was reading them how similar they were, so I thought it might be interesting to share that with my um, sixth grade students. And um, I think that I was able to point out the text-to-text -text connections by identifying the narrator and the similar themes. I could have gone a little more in-depth with it and thought of um, maybe some different components that were similar as well as some contrasting um, components as well, but I thought it went pretty well overall and I enjoyed both poems and um, I liked this assignment.